afternoon, everybody. Beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Hope you've had a great day. And uh, if you will, go ahead and get your Bible. Let's go back to 1 John. We've been looking at some of the, um, the things in, in, in this little epistle uh, that John um, wants the believer to be aware of. Wants them not just to be aware of, uh, but to be very confident of, to be very secure in uh, these, uh, these things. Uh, John, one of his favorite phrases, you're going to see it uh, in the passage we look at tonight. If you want to go ahead and get your Bible and look with me at uh, 1 John chapter 5, uh, verse 13, where we're going to be starting. And John says this, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. Uh, John believed, John was not a hope so or a think so person. John wanted the believers uh, of Jesus Christ to know some things. Uh, and we've talked about two of them uh, so far uh, as um, just kind of a very light, superficial study. Uh, John wanted the believer to know the source of his joy. Uh, why we should have joy. And again, joy is internal. Happiness is external. Uh, happiness is what happens to us. Joy is what's happening in us that the world can't take away. Uh, secondly was the jewel uh, we talked about of, uh, of fortification. Uh, John wanted the believer to be fortified. He wanted them to have defenses. He wanted them to be strong uh, in their faith. Now, uh, we're going to talk about another one tonight uh, that um, somewhat overlaps, to be very honest. Uh, again, because it was, honestly, it is a theme uh, for John. John wanted us to have uh, a third jewel here, and that is of security. Uh, John wanted the believer to know. Again, uh, I write these things that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. John wanted his audience to know that they had salvation, not to think it, not to hope it. Uh, he uh, already talked about fortification. He wanted them to be defended against the enemy. Um, and then one of the enemy's favorite attacks was to cause a believer uh, to doubt uh, his salvation. Uh, and so he's going to talk about the jewel of security. Uh, and so let's talk about how we have uh, that jewel, where that, where that jewel comes from. Look in verse 14. This is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know that he hear us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. First way that we have that security, uh, John says, is because we know that if we ask anything, he hears us. Uh, that uh, we have the assurance, we have the security uh, of, of knowing Knowing that uh, that God listens uh, to uh, our prayer, and you'll notice uh, in that phrase, this is the concept we have in Him. Uh, that little phrase "in Him" it doesn't uh, show up so much in the English, but that original uh, language phrase uh, it was talking about an intimate relationship uh, that we have acceptance, that we have access uh, to the Father. Uh, that is the security that just uh, drives home for us the security uh, of eternal life. The fact that we have um, access uh, to the Father, that we are accepted uh, by the Father, that we have an audience uh, with God. And so uh, John says, I want you to know you have eternal life. How do we know that? We know that because we're able uh, to go boldly uh, before the throne of God. Um, now, I want to point out and, and say something here. We, you, you know uh, that there is a difference in hearing. It says he will hear us. Doesn't mean that he is uh, some genie where we rub the bottle um, and poof, we get our, you know, our ever uh, desire. Um, you see a lot of things on social media. Share this with 10 people and you'll get your, you know, God will do this. Share this, do this, and God will do this. That's not the way it works. But he does say he'll hear us. 
Uh, and then we take other scripture and combine with that, uh, and, and we look at how we put together a whole theology uh, of prayer, and we can come to, to this realization. And I'm, I'm just going to kind of breeze through this. I, it's not really my purpose tonight, uh, but God answer, oh, God always answers our prayer. Um, if you've heard me preach or teach, you, you know I've talked about this before. God always answers our prayer. Sometimes he says yes. Uh, sometimes we pray for something and God says, sure, that's, uh, I'll honor that request. Sometimes he says no. Um, and again, no is an answer. Uh, people say all the time, God didn't answer my prayer. Yeah, he did. Uh, he just said no. Uh, he answered it. He, he just didn't give you, you know, what you asked for. That's still an, an answer. Um, so he answers by saying yes. He answers by saying no. Sometimes he says wait. Um, sometimes, you know, again, uh, I can remember years ago, I was just a little kid. I couldn't have been probably 10 years old. Um, I had something I, I really wanted for Christmas, uh, and I really wanted it. Um, and uh, believe it or not, my grandma and grandpa told me no. And I was just, you know, devastated. What I really didn't know was they weren't really saying no. They were saying wait, because lo and behold, uh, come uh, my birthday, when it rolled around, um, they gave me that. They got me that gift. Uh, so sometimes God says, wait. Uh, that's an answer. And then sometimes uh, God says, no, I don't think that's good, but I've got something even better for you. Uh, so uh, God answers our prayer. He hears our prayer. Uh, is different than saying God gives us everything that we ask for. But John says, I want you to be secure in your knowledge of your eternal life because God hears your prayer. Second thing that we notice about prayer is not only the direction of prayer, but then uh, the condition of prayer. He says we pray according to the will of God. Uh, and so uh, we, we pray uh, to him. And we have, again, the assurance then uh, of our salvation because he hears uh, our prayers. So we are secure uh, in his listening. Uh, we are secure in his love. Well, why does he listen to us? Uh, well, the Bible tells us very clearly uh, that we have an audience with God now because at the cru before the crucifixion, we didn't have, man didn't have an audience with God. If man had a, wanted to talk to God, he had to go and uh, go to the high priest, and the high priest went before God for all the people. Uh, but because he loved us, uh, he sent his son to die for us, uh, and the Bible tells us that the veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom, so that now you and I, as individuals, have access uh, to the Father. Uh, so this listening uh, reminds us then uh, of his love, uh, that he loved us so much that he would send his son to die. While we were yet sinners, uh, he, uh, he died. Uh, and so uh, we can have security in our salvation because he listens to us. Uh, that listening uh, shows us his uh, his love. Uh, but then let's back up. I want to back up a hair here. Uh, again, back to verse 13. These things I've written that you might know you have the Son of God, that you know that you have eternal life. Um, we know of our salvation because uh, of his life, because of the life that he has given us. The uh, Bible says before you knew Jesus Christ, if you're, if you're, if you're a lost man, the Bible says you are dead in your sins, dead in your trespasses. But if you're a child of God, you have been brought from darkness to life, from, to light, from death to life. Uh, and so we have security in his life. Why am I alive? Because he's alive. As long as Jesus Christ is alive, I have the promise of eternal life. As long as Jesus Christ is on the throne, uh, I have the promise of eternal, not just the security uh, of, uh, of eternal life. Uh, I have the, the guarantee uh, someone's going to have to be able to defeat, uh, defeat God himself, and that's not happening. Uh, and so I, my, sal my salvation is as secure as God's throne. Um, that that's the security we have uh, in, uh, in 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 Him. I think about 
Um, and, you know, we just not too long ago had an election, uh, and everybody knows what happens uh, at, at elections when a, uh, someone new wins, uh, when, whether it, you know, at, the, at the end of a term or whatever, that when, the, when the new uh, administration comes in, uh, we all know what happens. They come in, and they pretty much fire everybody that the old administration, the old president, uh, had put into position. A lot of them don't even uh, don't even get fired. They just go ahead and resign ahead of time because they know it's coming. Um, they you know they come in and clean house and put their own people in. Um, and so you know they they, they you know let, I'm, I'm gonna use I, and I have nobody in mind. Uh, so don't get political on me. I'm just using this as an example. Right now, I can't even remember for the life of me who, say, Donald Trump's Secretary of State was. I couldn't tell you to save my life. I, I, I might eventually come up. I don't know who it was. Well, as long let's let's say as long as Donald Trump was president, he was pretty secure in his job. He, he felt secure there. But he knew that if Trump ever was come out of office, he knew his job. He, he was going to be gone. Um, and so his job was as secure as the president's job. I hope that, that may be a poor illustration, but you know his job or the vice president or you know the secretary of state, defense, whatever, their job was as secure as the president's job. But the minute the president's job changed, the, the minute uh, the new president came in, their job. Again, most of them resigned before it even, because they knew uh, that their job was no longer secure. Well, as long as my God sits on the throne, my salvation is secure. Um, as long as he, he is, uh, as long as he is supreme, as long as he reigns, my salvation uh, is secure. And I have no worries, no fear whatsoever uh, about anybody dethroning. Uh, my Savior, because my Savior has already defeated death, hell, and the grave. The greatest enemy man knows my, my God has already defeated. So I am secure uh, in the life uh, of Jesus Christ. And John wants us to have that security. That's, that's what John's talking about here. He wants us to be secure. And we have that security because he hears us. We have that security because he loves us. And we have that security. I am secure uh, in the life of Jesus Christ because he lives. Uh, I, I am a joint heir. I have, uh, because he lives, I have life. Uh, and I hope you have that security tonight. Uh, and I hope that uh, encourages you. I hope that um, uplifts you some and prepares you. Uh, because I assure you, uh, sooner or later, Satan's going to come along and he's going to want to get on your shoulder and tell you uh, that you don't have that security, uh, that you don't have eternal life, that a real Christian wouldn't have done what you did, or a real Christian. Listen, as long as my God is on the throne, I have security. My salvation does not depend uh, on how I do things or what. My salvation depends on the finished work uh, of Jesus Christ at Calvary, and so does yours. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here next Wednesday night.